This is the sluggo. Slant and go. Georgia Tech, Florida State. If you're going to ruin this show by doing research, Notre Dame. My dentist is a Notre Dame grad. Definitely smells. Casey the Beef Creek, and it definitely smells. But what smells this week more than anything was my picks last week. We'll get into that <laughs> in a subsequent segment. But, man, I was terrible. Yeah, it's been fun, though. It's, it was so Finally, I had a decent week. Like you said, we'll get into it a little later, and we do have a, a lot going on this week, surprisingly, with no Clemson game. We don't we don't want to be Clemson-centric, but we've seemed to have been, been lately because uh, that's our connections, right? And that's our love. Yeah. But uh, there are plenty of other great Clemson shows, too, on, so we try to kind of run the gamut, have a little bit of fun. But no Clemson game this week. We got two pages of notes. We're ready to go. That's a crazy thing. I was starting to wonder if we're going to have anything to talk about. And then all of a sudden things started piling up and we're not even talking COVID cancellations or I'm sure we'll touch on it, but not a whole lot of time spent on the COVID cancellations, but just so much stuff piled up. But before we do anything, what are we known for? We're known for our shirts. What are you repping today? I got a little Bolero Snort Brewery here in New Jersey. I wore Bolero, I wore a brewery last week that was Clemson related. This one is as well. Bob Olson, if you put Robert Olson into one of those jumble machines, two words spit out called Bolero Snort. He's made it a label. It's actually huge up here uh, in partnership, a cigar city for those brew heads out there. Um, it's great. It's good beer, good people, Clemson Connection, Bolero Snort, Carlstadt, New Jersey. Just wanted to give him a, a, a shout out tonight. Carlstadt, New Jersey. That's one I couldn't find on the map when I was back it's when I was right by the stadium, right by uh, Giant Stadium, we call it, even though it's MetLife. Oh, I bet I bet the rent's not too bad there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I am, by the way, I, if I was any smarter, and I can't even figure out how to point out of here, if I was any smarter, I would have worn this shirt when we were repping the Levines because this, what I'm wearing, I bought in 1999 when I hiked the Appalachian Trail. You can probably see it right there, AT. Um, uh, me and my Clemson roommate hiked a part of the Appalachian Trail. It sounds a lot more better than it was. It was a small part. Um, but I bought this shirt in 1999 and it still fits, which is the most amazing thing to me, Twenty, almost 21 years later, went April of 99. But the the other one I bought, I bought two that day. The other one is a lot cooler, but it's also a lot snugger. So I went with the <laughs> loose fitting one, uh, but I'm, I'm proud I can still wear this shirt that I bought 21 years ago. Now it might fall off my back in five minutes, but hey, you know, that's I got a question for you, though. I know you were on the AT for a short period of time. Now, one thing that I've always been told about the Appalachian Trail is that, especially with, especially through hikers, maybe, but everyone gets a nickname. Did you have a nickname? We weren't on there long enough to have a All nickname. Right. <laughs> Justin was Deal. My buddy Justin Levine was Deal, and his wife Patrice was Steady. Justin always can make a deal, and Patrice was the slow and steady, so she got her... Uh, she got her run. But I just wanted to ask you if you had one. We did meet a lot of people with trail names, and we gave some people a few trail names, but we didn't get our own. So, or or if, if, um, if we did, I can't remember it. I just remember that first night, you know, because you can't prepare. I did a, a stepper kind of thing to try and prepare. There's no preparing, buddy. That first night, we got in the tent in the camp, and and he, my buddy said he was uh, looking at a map, figuring out where we're going to go the next day, and he turned to say something to me, and I was snoring. So <laughs> <laughs> I was Good out. Of it. I was out of it. Hey, today's a very special day. Now, I don't talk about this much, but I am a veteran and it's Veterans Day today. Right. And I don't talk about it much because I don't consider myself a veteran like, you know, um, somebody who fought in a war. And I know everybody who's a veteran is a veteran is a veteran. I get that. But that's a that's just a personal thing for me. I'm not saying anybody else shouldn't claim that or shouldn't um, say they're a veteran. It's just not something I talk about a lot. And uh, part of that's my dad. And I'll talk about my dad in a minute. But we've been or I've been gathering money in the interesting jar. Every time I say interesting, I put a dollar away. And so far, I have 53 bucks in there. And I've tried to figure out where I should donate that money to. I had a lot of ideas, but I wanted it came to me that I wanted to donate it to something that was more local, right? Something that I could actually see in action instead of sending it off to a national uh, non-for-profit. 
Well, I, come, I came across a story in, um, in a local magazine here. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. Let me share my screen here for a second. And um, so 2020 of you. <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt. Um, I, ca I came across a story in a uh, local magazine about a VFW here in, uh, in Kyle. I live in a small town of Kyle, Texas. But the thing about this VFW, and I'm not a member of this VFW. I was a member of American Legion in South Austin for years and years. But there you can see the, the magazine cover and the Quinteros. Now, what this, this, uh, these two folks do, have, do and have done is spend their own money to feed veterans on Saturday morning at the VFW. Anybody can come and show up. They don't ask you. They don't even ask you if you're a veteran, but obviously that's who it's for and what it's for. But they don't care. They just want you to show up. They will feed you. They've been doing it with their own money. So I decided we can help and um, we will do that or I will do that um, by uh, donating the interesting fund jar money to this organization and um, happy to do that. But I've also wanted everyone to know that you can help. I have decided that I will donate. Uh, if you, Type in the comments and you put interesting in your comment, like interesting note, Indiana's lost 29 in a row against Michigan State or whatever. Put interesting in your comment. I will add a dollar to that interesting fun jar that will go to the VFW uh, post 12058 in Kyle, Texas. It's going to be used to feed veterans um, or anybody else that wants to show up on a Saturday morning and needs breakfast. So that's what we're going to do with the interesting money jar. That's awesome. And I and I told you on our little outline that I needed to get this in early, right? So or we needed to get this in early because I think it's a great idea. So anybody out there that's listening, throw an interesting into a comment for us and and uh, let's get this let's get this thing up. Let's feed some people. Not not to not to spend Marty's money here because I plan on helping <laughs> him out too, but let's uh let's get this thing up if we can to as much <laughs> thanks Nelson. Um let's get it up as much as we can here and, and help these folks out. What a great story. I, and I'm gonna ask you off off air to send that to me because that's really cool that they're doing that stuff my parents do uh, around here in New Jersey. So it'd be something they'd be interested, I'm sure. You know, it's just a, it's a great story because they've been, like I said, they've been doing it with their own money and um, he's asked for nothing. He, you know, you want to donate, donate, whatever we're doing this. This is what we believe in. So I'm going to help him out from the show. And I'm also going to help him out on my own. Nelson's in uh, Nelson. It was a limit of one, but we'll, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that part, but I'll match his interest. I'll match him. They don't have any idea that I'm doing this. I haven't even talked to him. I just saw the article and thought, cool, because this is the thing about veterans, right? They, they don't ask in general, they don't ask for a lot for the service. And my dad was in world war two and he used to tell me the stories growing up. Did not glorify war at all, believe me. Uh, but he told me stories growing up. And one Father's Day, um, I took 10 minutes on a computer, wrote him an email. I was here in Texas. He was in Charleston. Wrote him an email and just said, thank you. You know, I, you know, you lost your friends. You did this. You were 19. You jumped out of an airplane, got lost in France in the middle of World War II. I'd have crapped. I was 19. I could barely drive a car, right? This guy's killing Nazis in France by himself lost. Um, and um, so I said, thank you for your service. You know, you didn't have to do that, et cetera, et cetera. It meant more to him than any father's day gift. I could have bought, I could have bought him a new car and it wouldn't have meant as much as that email. So That's just awesome. thank the veteran. Yeah. Wow. Um, I was going to take a little time too, cause I got family. Thank you, Marty. Seriously. I know you hate it and you don't think you did anything, but you did. You, you sacrificed your time and, and you were willing to put yourself out there. Had your, uh, had, had your number been called for lack of a better phrase. I have cousins and they are my heroes, uh, in the army. I have Marines, my uncle Rocco, my uncle Nick, my cousin, John was the highest ranking official that was killed in action in, uh, Afghanistan. Yeah. Um, fantastic we have a listener of the show smitty i call him rw smith he listens and watches in charleston great friend of mine was in the air force so 
Uh, thank you, veterans. It's always cool to say thank you to a veteran, but especially on a day like today. You guys deserve way more than just a day. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a it's a great day to make sure that the sh uh, the sun is shining directly on you guys. So thank you to all the veterans out there. I really appreciate it, Nelson. We appreciate you, buddy. Yeah. <clears throat> just a little something to uh, show our appreciation. Um, all right, now let's talk college football. Now, the, first, the first thing that I ran into Casey about over the weekend was some slob on ESPN two or three or four or five or six. I don't even know which one it was. Talk. He actually said this. This is not me embellishing this. He said, where would Oklahoma be without those two losses? Genius. They would be where every other undefeated team is at the top of the standings. Isn't that why we count wins and losses? <laughs> Where would Oklahoma be without those two losses? What the heck is that? Oklahoma's got two losses and they're trying to fit them into the college playoffs sometime, somehow. I, I, I don't get it. The love affair with this team that goes over the playoffs every year. It's just like, I, what what kind of idiotic boneheaded statement was that? It comes out every year, though, doesn't it? It, it? Something like that. Not necessarily even with Oklahoma. Not to not to divert a little bit, but I remember sitting at a bar in Tampa one year that Florida had four losses, and some guy literally stood up on the bar and said, "The best four loss team in the country." And I, and I just <laughs> I looked at him. I said, "What does that get you?" <laughs> so, I mean, like people will find narratives to fit whatever they want. So, yeah, Oklahoma with two losses, that's what they are. They're, they're three and two, four and two, whatever they may be. They're probably a top 25 team. I think they are still ranked, but they are what their record says they are. Isn't that what uh, one of the old NFL coaches said in a press conference? I just, the way he said it, you know, uh, a lot of other, I've heard a lot of other people say, well, they're coming on, they're playing better. And yes, okay, agreed with that. But they're also, you know, playing Kansas. So, um, got to take it with a grain of salt. But anyway, just to say, where would they be without two losses? Well, they'd probably be in the top four. But <laughs> <laughs> it just, it was just bizarre. The, uh, my other takeaway from the weekend was the, officiating in the Clemson Notre Dame game. And I don't like to harp on this too much because, you know, it's pure sour grapes and they weren't all for Notre Dame somewhere against Clemson. I've seen some Clemson people with ridiculous takes on, you know, this was a late hit. That was a late hit, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Everything was a late hit. That's not true in my mind, but it was just so bad. And the 10 minute reviews as you and I were texting about over the weekend and you reminded me, I had forgotten about the review of the review, right? <laughs> um, but the 10 minute reviews have to end. I mean, okay, is it third and six or is it third and five and a half? Just play the dang game. It was awful, man, especially that review of the review. I've never seen that happen before. Uh, and literally, I had to turn off Tariko and Dungy. Now I'm biased beyond all get out, but it literally felt like we were sitting with Notre Dame people that were just yelling and yapping in your ear. There was one play, and I, I wish I remembered the exact play, but Tariko was trying to, like, talk the fans or talk the audience into that it being a good thing for Notre Dame. And, and I, oh, man, I wish I remember what it was, and I apologize. It'll probably come to me during the show in the middle when we're talking to our guests or something. But um, it was just – it was really bad. And I all, I had you in my ear pretty much thinking when, when you were talking about the replays and you went on the rant early in, in the life of Sluggo here, just how much it's taken away from the game. It really did on Saturday night. It added probably 35, 40 minutes to that game. It was brutal. You couldn't get – there was no flow to the game whatsoever. Uh, there really wasn't. It, it was just, it was really, really hard. And nine times out of 10, it went against Clemson. But so that made it even worse for me personally. But man, it was annoying. But you're right. The third and six, third and five and a half, there was one that Clemson looked like, according to the yellow line, even though, you know, it's not official. We got a first down, but then they, they marked them short and then the replay wasn't concluded. Whatever. Of course it's not conclusive. There's 94 dudes tackling one dude with a ball. Anyway, I could go on all day, but I know we got somebody waiting and we got other things to talk about. So but I just I it's what I it's it's kind of the most basic tenet though, is it's and it's how I tell Parker, my 14-year-old son, for those who don't know, I say if you've got to spend 10 minutes reviewing, it is not clear and obvious. I mean, I don't know. It's how simple is that? 
There's if supposed to be a time to, limit too, right? There's supposed I, to be I don't a time limit. Yeah. But if you got to go to commercial and come back and they're still reviewing it, it's not clear and obvious. You know, if it's the last play of the game, I get it, right? Win or loss, whatever. But, you know, if it's second eight or is it second seven and three quarters or what, you know, come on, man. Uh, uh, to, bar- to borrow a phrase, um, the, the 10 minute reviews. Hey, real quick before we get to our guest, uh, Michigan lost to Indiana. Uh, just a couple couple things that happened over the weekend. I'll run them down and let you give your thoughts on the ones you're interested in or maybe none of them. Mich- uh, oh, and speaking of interesting, use interesting in a comment so I can donate a uh, dollar to the VFW 12058 in Kyle, Texas, to help them feed hungry veterans. Uh, Michigan lost to Indiana. South Carolina got blasted by Texas A&M 48-3 and kicked a field goal down 41 to nothing. Uh, talk about moral victories. Arizona State had a 13-point lead, but USC scored uh, two touchdowns in 92 seconds to win the game. Now, this is one where Nelson was messaging me. Uh, Nelson Wilhite was messaging me, and he said, yeah, USC, blah, blah, blah. And I said, uh, well, not anymore. <laughs> a minute and a half, they scored two touchdowns. Georgia got pounded by Florida. Talk about any of that you want to or none of it if you don't want well, to. Well, I, I, of course, I have a thought, right? That's why I'm on here looking at <laughs> talking to you. I, I can talk. Yeah, South Carolina getting blasted. I guess they just – that ship has sailed, right? They win the big game or they thought – it's just funny watching on Twitter, seeing their fan base after a win like uh, Auburn, that they're all excited. Oh, maybe maybe this team wins five, six games this year. Then they get blasted by LSU, and it's like, oh, fire must champ. Then they get really blasted by Texas A&M, where they're kicking a field goal down by 100. And now it's really like he might get fired by Monday, meaning three days ago, two days ago. Uh, so it, 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 is, it is fun. To, to see a, a fan base implode, especially a rival fan base. But the team just seems like it's I – I don't know what's going on. The hires that they've made, just not working out yet. Um, but how much longer does yet get you? Arizona State blowing that lead, man. I, I was hopeful. I like Helter Skelter in every other conference other than the ACC. Um, so I was really excited that maybe Arizona State would throw a wrench into the Pac-12 season, especially with preseason hopeful USC and – uh, Kedon Slovis there in the Pac-12. Still not sure they get a team in just because they started so late, but um, it's nice to kind of have five and five teams from the Pac-12. And then Georgia getting pounded. They were up 10 nothing early, and I thought that – or maybe it was 14 nothing early. It was, it, was, it was 14 nothing early, and they uh, imploded, I guess. And once again, it's it's how they score on the first play of the game. We're getting text messages. I won't say from you, who, but – uh, <laughs> it was a, it was a lot of fun, and Florida's good, man. Florida's offense is really good. Their defense has something, something. They're they're coming. They're getting better. But that's it. Reminds me of those Alabama teams uh, and the Clemson team a couple of years ago that beat that Alabama team just by outscoring them. This Florida team might be built to outscore Alabama this year. We'll see. Hmm. That is intriguing. Hey, I see your uh, your favorite high school football teams down here in the right. comments. Yeah, Eddie Lockett from the Bluefield Beavers football team on Facebook. They do begin. They play this weekend. I will. I'll, I'll give my update tomorrow night on the Chop and Beef Show. But um, thank you for checking in, Eddie. Appreciate it. All right. And Casey, I'll let you introduce our guest. It's time for our guest. We'll talk more about the Notre Dame game. We wanted to get our guest on uh, to 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 give him a chance to uh, to uh, talk about Notre Dame. Sure. Yeah. Joining us this week, we wanted to give. Uh, the fifth quarter, Clemson, Drew Watts, joining us from Columbia, South Carolina. He's also a founding member of the Twin Tigers podcast, part of the fifth quarter Clemson, or f- part of the fifth quarter network. So welcome in, Drew. Thanks a lot for joining us. We appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate you guys having me on tonight. Sure. Uh, we are we are really glad to, to have you on. And uh, we always like to start out our guests with a uh, softball question to get you ready to roll and into the conversation. So, um, as part of my show prep, I went and checked out your podcast. I hadn't heard of it. Casey turned me on to it. So I went and checked out the podcast. And lo and behold, you were calling me out personally. I felt <laughs> were you personally calling me out. Uh, I think the term used was lazy analysis when criticizing <laughs> Clemson's run blocking. Yeah. 
And I wondered if you wanted to apologize now or at the end of this segment after that Notre Dame game. Uh, yeah, so it was – it definitely didn't look good for me this past weekend. Uh, I still stick by the statement of this. Uh, this is a good pass-blocking offensive line. Uh, I feel like if you go back and watch the games, even the Notre Dame game, I think you will see that pass blocking has not been the problem. Um, I, I still think Notre Dame stacked the box, started with seven, added – added eight and nine in some cases uh, on sure running downs. But it's tough enough whenever you whenever you can't get a push, but now you're not getting a push with eight guys in the box. So it's really tough to get those uh, those gaps open, even for a guy like ETN who needs the smallest gap to, uh, to break a 50-yarder. <laughs> no doubt. Hey, hey, Drew, I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's been waiting all week to say that to you, and I had no idea when I invited you to come on that that was going to happen. But tell us a little bit about uh, uh, about the Twin Tiger podcast. We want to give you guys love on this show, um, and tell us tell us where it started, where how you got involved with the Fifth Quarter, and all of that. Yeah, and then so, we'll get into the Notre Dame game a little more. Yeah. So to start off, I had you know I'd reached out to Fifth Quarter, uh, seeing if they had anything. Um, seeing any open openings for the Clemson page. And luckily uh, they had one right when I was asking. I uh, took over probably probably around March or so. Been running it ever since. And then up until about a month ago, I had been running it by myself. And I reached out to a buddy who had been um, trying to trying to get on with us. And we had an opening for a, for a co-manager for it. So me and a guy named Aaron Bass have been running it together. And he's been doing great work the, the – the page has really grown ever since he's uh, hopped on there with us. And, you know, I love podcasts. It's my favorite form of media. I'd rather listen to a podcast than, you know, watch Sports Center or anything like that. So I came up with the idea to start the uh, Twin Tiger show with him. He was all on board and we're all in, I guess I should say. <laughs> and the rest is kind of history. So Twin Tigers, where did the name come from? Uh, we really were pretty much just throwing – throwing darts, trying to come up with something catchy. Um, so I got to give full credit to Aaron on that. Sounds one. familiar. Yeah, we know about those darts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we know about those darts. All right, Notre Dame. Let's talk Clemson and Notre Dame. And uh, you already told us a little bit about your your feelings about the offensive line. How about your just general takeaways from the game? DJ Uyunglele is an absolute freak. Uh, quarterback is something we're not going to have to worry about for a while. Um, wide receiver. I mean, we're seeing guys like Cornell just come out and ball, you know, no Frank Ladson, no Joe and Gata. So it's nice to have those kind of role players per se come up and, and really do their thing and show, you know, why they're on scholarship, why they're, why they're at Clemson. Um, <clears throat> defense is, is a little tougher to grade. I haven't gone back and watched the full game uh, defensively just yet. Uh, it's tough to look at whenever you got, you know, Skowski and Jones and Tyler Davis all out. Um, I saw a stat uh, pro football focus came out and said that Mike Jones is the highest graded uh, coverage guy in the country and he's a linebacker. So anytime you're not having him, it definitely makes it tougher. You know, that long play that they hit to go and tie the game, take it to overtime. Mike Jones is probably on that guy. And then Skowski, you know what he does when he blitzes. So it was disheartening to see us get, blown up over and over and over with just big plays. But, you know, top 14, double overtime, and you're missing six or so starters just on the defensive side of the ball. Can't ask for a whole lot more with the backups in as long as they were. Now, Drew, you said something interesting there about Mike Jones. Uh, one of the big the guys on Notre Dame that really felt like to me as a, just a non-football playing guy that talks a lot um, is the tight end. And tight ends have seemingly, since I was a student back in the 90s, uh, it seems like any team has the best tight end in the country. That's that's what it seems against Clemson that week. But this little freshman, he's not little, maybe Mike Jones covers him because he kind of ate up whenever they needed a big play. It felt like that Michael or Michael Mayer. Um, they were playing the Friday the 13th or the Halloween theme every time he caught the ball. But it seemed like he was killing Clemson and the underneath stuff. He was bailing out Ian Book who looked good this weekend. But do you think that maybe that may have been a difference too, maybe in the in December if they are, if if we are lucky enough to play them again, that maybe that cuts some of that off? 
Yeah, and I don't I don't think you even need to say if we're lucky enough. I don't I don't think there's any any other choice. I think you're going to see Clemson, Notre Dame, and Charlotte. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely having a guy um, like Mike Jones back there to kind of step up and take some of those coverage plays away from a, a true freshman like Trenton Simpson. We know how athletically a- athletically gifted he is, but he's still a true freshman in a very difficult defensive scheme where Brent Venables to learn so quick. So anytime you can get a guy that's been in the system for three years back out there, it's definitely going to help. I mean, a lot of people think that he plays like Isaiah Simmons, but I just think that's because they play the same position. I would go more with the Dorian O'Daniel comparison. Uh, very athletic, um, physical, likes to hit, but can also cover, uh, cover down the field. Not nearly as big as Isaiah was either. Nah. <laughs> Any other takeaways from that game uh, Saturday, Drew? Um, BT Potter doing his thing. Um, yep. <laughs> I feel like everybody, everybody that played walked off with an injury at least once. Didn't like to see that. The bye week's coming at the right time. Just uh, ready to move on to the next one, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, we're talking with Drew Watts of the Twin Tigers podcast of the Fifth Quarter Podcast Network. Drew, thank you for joining us. Uh, Casey, what else you got for Drew? Well, I just on the offensive side, right? We we DJ is is fantastic. Uh, Etn's kind of struggled the last couple of weeks. Maybe we equate that to the the no run blocking. I agree with you completely. Don't tell Marty this about the pass blocking because DJ had all the time in the world to throw. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the run way, block. my my comment was about run blocking specifically. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, the run blocking seems to be um, an issue, obviously, and and something that has come up, unfortunately, the last three games is ETN fumbling. Is it all on him, or is it is it because of maybe some? Uh, I, I can't say this because we're we're here not at practice, but. Um, some infamiliarity, I guess, with the quarterback. Maybe, maybe they're having trouble with the with the transition. I don't know. I mean, I'm just gonna throw that out there at, at you. I could, uh, I could see the maybe the uh, botched handoff against BC, the 99 yard return, being a little bit of unfamiliarity. Uh, you know, it was a little bit of a high handoff, but ETN did still get both hands on the ball. So, in my eyes, you know, I, I played tight end growing up, so. I feel like you get both hands on the ball, you need to come away with it. Uh, the Now, the Notre Dame one, if you go back and you slow that play down, Travis Etienne had his eyes on the defender who was in his face, and that's why he dropped the ball. He was trying to make a move before he ever had it. Ball came off his hands, went right to the Notre Dame guy's numbers, and took it to the house. That's that's exactly what I was going to say. It looked like in the Notre Dame game, it was more on Travis, where the the Boston College could have been a, a combination, or or even maybe DJ's, you know, a little bit more DJ's uh, issue on the exchange. But that Notre Dame, when you can see Travis looking up, uh, looking up field at the defender who who should have been blocked and shouldn't have been a concern. So, um, you know, that's kind of the way it goes. But it's just weird that you know both of them. Uh, both of them went right to the defender. You know what I mean? In the Boston College, you could have fumbled that ball and either recovered it or tackled him inside the 10-yard line, you know, and they would have had to go 90 yards to score. But instead, it bounced the right way both times. And it's just the luck of the the luck of the luck draw. And I've always said, or not always, I've said in the last couple of years, this Clemson team is hard to beat if they don't turn the ball over. Um, and I thought, the turnovers were going to come on interceptions and they sure haven't. They've come on fumbles from ETN, which is really surprising for me. Yeah. It's been, it's been weird. It's like, you know, at first he couldn't catch and now he can, he catches everything thrown his way. And we never had any worries about him fumbling because he seemingly just never did it. And now I think he's lost three fumbles in the last four games, two of which have gone for scores. And so it's just, you know, that's football. It's kind of, you know, basketball has swings. Everybody goes on a run. Football sometimes, you know, it's not a round ball. It's going to bounce odd ways. So it just doesn't seem to be bouncing in our favor right now. Joined by Drew Watts of the Twin Tiger podcast of the Fifth Quarter Network. And thanks so much again for joining us, coming on, and just some random dude that emails you or texts you on uh, Facebook Messenger. We do appreciate it. And you got some great insights. So, uh, tell the people out there how we can listen to you more and how we can get involved and whatever else you need to pimp, pimp, whatever you need to pimp. <laughs> so uh main thing 
Uh, I think the biggest platform we're on right now as far as podcast is, I see you got in the background, is Spotify. Uh, the Twin uh, Twin Tiger Show, you can either look it up that way or by FQ Clemson. Um, it should pop up there for you. If you have Anchor, um, another app for podcasting, it's there also. Uh, give us a follow on Twitter. Um, our Twitter handle is at FQ Clemson, simple enough. Um, I know my personal is uh, at DWATSCU, so pretty simple to find there also. Um, I, th- I think we're taking this week off of the show just because I knew I was coming on here with you guys. I um, wanted to make sure I had plenty of time to get everything ready for that. Uh, big things coming. I got uh, got my buddy Eric McLean coming on with us nice. before the pit, uh, pit game to talk about senior day a little bit. So got some big things coming on the podcast and make sure you keep your eyes on Twitter also. I get Brandon Pilgrim. You get Eric McLean. So see, I, you know, you get the all world, <laughs> Mr. Clemson. I get, no, I'm just kidding. No, I get, Brandon, I get Brandon's a good the, guy. All the time people say we look alike. So you do, I'm, you I'm, do. I'm chalk it up <laughs> yeah. I've been, I've actually interviewed uh, Eric on a, a different iteration of, of this podcast or one of the 87 podcasts I started. Uh, he's a great interview. Uh, you have to ask him, maybe you heard it before the story about how he stumbled into Clemson, right? He was a Tennessee boy. All he knew was Tennessee. And and one day he was driving down the road and uh, uh, he got a phone call. He didn't even know where Clemson was. And now he's Mr. Clemson. So yep. that's a great, that's a really great story. Drew, thank, thank you for your time. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. We hope to have you back on sometime. Absolutely. I, I appreciate was you guys that. letting me on. Of course, third quarter. Drew Watts, Twin Tigers Podcast, Fifth Quarter Podcast Network, Spotify. He's working on the uh, the Apple Podcast. I know how that is too, Drew. So hang in there; it'll get there. All right, thank you guys. <laughs> Have Thanks, a good one, Drew. Appreciate you. All right, Casey. Awesome. Great interview, good time, good guy. It was it was really great to have him on, and we're always about promoting other podcasts and shows. Um, we just want everybody to be successful and. We think, uh, you know, if, it, if they're successful, we'll be successful. So can't ever talk too much about Clemson. And speaking of Clemson, guess what time? You know what time it is, Casey? <laughs> what time is it? I don't think you could have done any worse if you tried. Oh, I take that as a victory. These yeah, guys what? aren't doing research, so why should I? Beef, you stink the most. A true believer in what they're doing in North Carolina. That's why I'm picking Virginia Tech, Tennessee. I love Spencer Rapp. I agree with Marty. I don't like this. Look, you smell it in the backdoor cover. It's time for backdoor covers. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. What's up, guys? There's no, that's the only cover that we like best here. Hey. I'd take a back door cover, a front door cover, through the roof, down the chimney. <laughs> because I and Zach, I you didn't hear us earlier. Uh, well, nobody heard us except me and Beef because this is before the show started, didn't you? <laughs> but I said, I, 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 for 23 weeks now, I have blasted Casey every way I could, right? I've made yeah, fun of him. I've, I've laughed about everything he does, everything he says, everything he picks. Good pick on Texas A&M, by the way, Beef. Um, <laughs> well, let me put it this way. So far. Uh, <laughs> so I told him I'm not just going to show the standings tonight. I'm going to show last week's results at right. my own at, at my own expense. <laughs> Look at that week from the Beef. Ooh. Mm, we got us a game here, boys. Look at that week from the Beef. And Zach's now only one game behind. Can you believe that? As good as that was, as good as it is, Casey Tighten. still gets to go first this week. <laughs> <laughs> Tighten in the wrench, boys. But Tighten in that wrench. Could be a big change next week. Who knows? Who knows? You know, we uh, the games this week were a little weird. There, there, there's your boyfriend, Zach. Um, <laughs> the games this week were really there's it's slim pickings. I mean, yeah. really tough, really tough. We're gonna start out with. Notre Dame is a 13 and a half point favorite at Boston College. Beef, who you got? You know, it's funny that you uh, asked me to go first, especially because this is the first time that I'm seeing the full schedule here of what we're picking. So that's good. Um, I know you sent a text earlier, but I was busy today, so I really didn't even look at it. So who are we picking? Notre Dame, Boston College? Um, Yes, sir. Wow. You know, this is a trap game for us, I think, here picking games because Notre Dame just coming off that big win against Clemson, traveling to BC and their former quarterback, Phil Yurkovich. You know, 
BC looks good. They do have three losses still. I think Notre Dame keeps rolling, actually, and wins this game big, even though technically a rivalry game. I know you guys are probably going the other way, and I want to be different. Notre Dame. All right. Beef picks Notre Dame. Zach Locks. Dare to be different, right? It works out. It works out every time, right? Every at least, time it doesn't work out. At least twenty percent of the time it works every time. Uh, Thirteen and a half is a pretty large spread, and Notre Dame this year is has not proved to be uh, one to count on when it comes to these larger numbers. I think so. I'm going to go with BC myself. You know, like I said, the 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 BC quarterback does just enough to to get around. Uh, they they played Clemson and North Carolina, both pretty tough. Uh, at BC after a, a big win for Notre Dame. I'd, I'd like them to keep it close enough here and uh, stay inside the 13 and a half. So give me BC. That makes too yeah. much sense. <laughs> I try. Don't want to make sense. Hey, uh, let me see my extensive notes here. I've got uh, Notre Dame is 7-0 straight up the last seven versus BC. So I think Notre Dame's going to win the game. But um, I'm with Zach. I think Notre Dame has a little letdown and – who knows that Friday COVID test after the celebration last week um, may may come back to uh, to bite them. I hope that's not the case. I'm not wishing it on anybody. Believe me. Um, but uh, who knows what um, what happens? But let me let me digress for just a second. I meant to mention this earlier when we were talking about Notre Dame. You know, remember when everybody used to complain about Clemson uh, uh, fans jumping on the field? Oh, you beat Duke and you go on the field not realizing it's a tradition, et cetera. Did you ever think back in 2008 when Dabo became head coach that Notre Dame would just be going nuts when they beat Clemson? This crazy, isn't it? I mean, just wild. It really yeah. is crazy. I never would have thought, and I thought that almost initially right when it happened too. It's like, whoa, this is weird. This is kind of surreal that people are rush, rushing the court for beating us. It's crazy. Yeah. The court, the court. Yeah. It's, it's called doing. a field down here in Texas. I'm not sure what they call the it. They rush the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> the pitch. All right. Second game is uh, Michigan State uh, for most of the week or early part of the week this was seven and a half they're playing indiana indiana's traveling to michigan state i believe um it's down to seven zach locks parker it is it moved down to seven uh i read three of the last four games were decided by 10 points or less uh that may have something to do with it plus it, it could just be something in the water with michigan state uh very up and down team obviously got up for that michigan game uh went ahead and uh clobbered their rival and then what happened last week versus iowa uh what was it 49 to 7 got Hell the back. doors beat off of them out of nowhere you know uh so it, it's it's kind of up and down with michigan state i think um i'd like yeah, i said it last week i like indiana i just i just still can't trust them i really can't it, the seven points too it just it, it really scares me um they are America's sweetheart now, though, I think, you know, they're, they're like Minnesota last year. Uh, everybody's kind of rooting for them, but I'm going to take Michigan State. I, I it, It's at home. Uh, Indiana also has Ohio State next week, so they could be kind of skipping past Michigan State here. So I like Indiana to win, but just not by seven. All right. I uh, Michigan State's nine and one straight up and seven and three against the spread the last ten versus Indiana fifteen and five against the spread in the last twenty, so history says Michigan State. I think they live for one more week. I but I, at seven and a half I was going to take Michigan State, but at seven I'm going to take Indiana, and I'm different than Zach Locks Parker. So Casey, who are you siding with here? Oh, God. Um, you know, Rocky Lombardi looked terrible against Rutgers, then showed up against Michigan, then let, he's he's playing Jekyll and Hyde here, so you never know what you're going to get with him. Michael Penix Jr. is the story. I love him. We love him on the, on the Chop and Beef show. Uh, we have whole segments after him um, <laughs> for, for different reasons. But uh, I, I like the story. I'm going to ride. I'm going to ride with um, Indiana here again until they prove me wrong. Oh, great. That'll probably be Saturday now that you and I are on the... Uh... Correct. Correct. <laughs> <You know. laughs> All right. Um, I went out of order again. I put it on the... I put it on... The, I, I went in the right order, but I put it on the, the rundown wrong. Miami is at getting two and a half points. A top 10 team is getting two and a half points traveling to Lane Stadium uh, to take on Virginia Tech. 
Uh, I think I'm supposed to go first. I'm all confused. We'll just roll with what I got. I got locks first on this one. Locks, you go first. All right. Um, this one, uh, real head scratcher. No, I mean Miami's not favored versus Virginia Tech. Uh, and even I looked on ESPN, their matchup predictor thing that they have has Virginia Tech at 62.2% to win. Uh, I, I'm just, again, not believing anything I'm reading, which never works for me so far, obviously. Uh, <laughs> Derek King, I think, is still the best athlete going to be on this field. Uh, so I'm going to ride with him. Uh, so so give me Miami here on this one. All right. I, I don't know what's going on, but we'll find out Saturday, I suppose, right? Um, yeah, no doubt. And I randomly put me second. So, hey, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know how – I don't know how – Miami is an underdog in this game. I, I don't see it, especially in a stadium that's not going to have a ton of fans in it, right? Hey. I mean, it's, this is not the Lane Stadium at all. I heard another stat this week. doesn't apply to this game because it's only two and a half, but Virginia Tech's lost like 10 games as double-digit favorites under uh, Justin Fuente in the short time he's been there. Think about that. Yeah. Not, co- not, not hasn't covered, has lost, right? Wow. Um, so – um, I'm gonna ride with Miami also. KC the beef Cregan, who you got? Uh it's it this smells. This line smells, everything about it smells. I'm not sure why it is what it is. Uh especially coming off a loss to Liberty, a, a gut-wrenching <laughs> loss on a last second <laughs> field goal that he calls timeout, but he lets Oops. the kid and he blocks it and, and runs it back for a touchdown, but called timeout instead. Anyway, it was, it was such an ending to that Virginia Tech Liberty game. I, I, with all that said, is Brevin Jordan out the tight end, the highly sought after tight end for Miami? I don't know if he's still out. He was out last week against NC State. I'm going Virginia Tech, and I'm not sure why. All right, well, lock it in. <laughs> that's that's kind of your picks, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're not sure why, but you go with it. It's fishy. <laughs> I'm going with it. It's it's so fishy. There's something up there. All right. Well, h- here you go. This for you, Casey. Definitely it smells. All right. It definitely, definitely smells. Next up, SMU and Tulsa. Let's see who I uh, – SMU is getting two and a half points at Tulsa. Who did I randomly put first? It's back to Beef. Beef, you're up first. SMU or Tulsa? I don't even – I can't even BS my way through this one. I don't know anything about either team. Southern <laughs> Methodist, I have SMU covering – or uh, with the two and a half points. All right. Pretty good. Um, Locks, you're up next. I'll uh, I'll second beef with the I have no <laughs> idea uh, what's going on here. This is kind of like the <laughs> the default game that we fell to. Uh, yeah, I, I I saw SMU won uh, last week and scored a lot of points. Uh, therefore, I'll go with Tulsa. Uh, they're supposed to win by the ESPN matchup predictor. I don't know. I got nothing. Hey, give me Tulsa. <laughs> Fox right. is doing research too this week. Yeah, I try. ESPN.com. I've done massive research on this game. Last three games, SMU's two and one straight up, and they're zero and three against the spread against Tulsa. But the, they'll win this one and they'll cover. I'm taking SMU also. Okay. All right, the final pick of the game of the game of the of the night. Washington State is getting 10 points. Oregon travels to Wazoo. Who did I randomly put first on this one? Oh, it's me. <laughs> uh, I didn't even know I was I was first on this one. We get back to my notes. Ooh, stat of the night. Everybody chime in. This is a interesting stat. Oregon mm-hmm. is 0-10 against the spread versus Washington State the last 10 times they've played. Really? 0-10. Very misleading stat because four times in that 10 games, they were 30 or more point favorites. And I think one or two times they were 40 point favorites. Didn't cover. Now they're only a 10 point favorite on Saturday. And I think Oregon covers. Let's see who I randomly put next. It's beef. Uh, Yeah. I I, just watching last week. uh, Oregon looks good. It's probably the hope for the PAC 12. It seems like I just don't have any information on washington state at all other than what they did last weekend to oregon minus 10 i'll take it all right zach locks parker yeah i tried uh to compare 
both teams from last week's games. One scored 38 points, one scored 35 points, both won. One had one turnover, one fumble, and one interception. I said, oh, well, there's a difference. I looked at the other team. One had a fumble and an interception. So I, I got nothing. I mean, I'm going with Oregon, I guess. I, <laughs> mark it down. I mean, I, I just I know nothing about Pac-10. There's not a lot of data out there to, to look at trends or anything. They're one game, good. yeah. Yeah, they're good enough, I guess. And that's it's what people picked early in the year. So that, that's some of the things that lead me to believe that they're better in Washington State in this in this go right here. Jason Priester said it on the on a comment earlier. Vegas knows something about he was probably talking about the Virginia Tech Miami, but even it's still early for the Pac twelve though, so minus ten is gonna be interesting to see. Put another dollar for me. Um <laughs> what happens out there because we still don't have a true feel and Vegas doesn't have a true feel of week two into the Pac-12 so all right let me go through these picks make sure I got everybody down because I'm having a little trouble tonight like every night um Casey the Beef Cregan took Notre Dame Indiana Virginia Tech Tulsa and S- Oregon SMU uh, that's what I thought okay yeah. okay thank you um. Oh yeah, you did take SMU. Okay, I, I'm looking at the wrong column. See, I don't even know. Okay, I took Boston College, Indiana, Miami, SMU, and Oregon. Zach Locks Parker, Boston College, Michigan State, Miami, Tulsa, and Oregon. Is that right, fellas? That's right. Sounds All right. Good. After after getting three three uh, corrections in there, the random picks. The random picks are 15 and 15 on the season, which is. <laughs> 500, which is better than all of us. <laughs> um, <laughs> random picks are Boston College, Missis- Mississippi, Boston College, Michigan State, Virginia Tech, Tulsa, and Oregon. All right, Thank fellas. Ne- uh, next week, speaking of Jason Priester, Jason Priester from allclemson.com is going to be on next week unless he bails after this horrible show um, to talk about recruiting. Now we know that Trevor uh, Trevor's likely gone after this year. I don't care what he says, but he may be gone after this year. But we got DJ Ui Ungalele. How you like that, Casey? Been practicing. It was close. It was close. Uh, yeah, uh, you know DJ's got a couple years left. But who's the quarterback after that? That's what I want to ask Jason Priester next week. I want to thank uh, Drew Watts of the Twin Tigers podcast, Nelson Wilhite for everything you do for the Facebook group, Nelson, and keeping these comments flowing. Also, uh, Jason Priester again. He adds more content to that page than anyone. And all of our regulars who tune in uh, and like the show and been enjoying it, we appreciate you. Appreciate your comments. Casey, got anybody you wanted to to, uh, shout out? No, just to echo Parrot, what you just said there too. Thanks so much for everyone listening. JP or Jason Priester, uh, Nelson Wilhite is is the the policeman on our Facebook page, and he adds so much to every week of college football. Heck, he and I were texting back and forth last night about the Mac. So uh, love <laughs> love the correspondence. Love having it. Keeps me interested. Keeps me on my toes. So we're happy to have him and Locks. Thanks so much again for joining us. We appreciate it. Drew Watts. Um, Twin Tiger show was was fantastic. Check out his podcast as well. And we do look forward to having him back at some point. Yeah. Hey, Locks, thanks for wa- wa- washing the uh, Doc Locks shirt and uh, getting it ready for this week. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, this this past week I had a win record. Last week I just, it didn't feel right. So, you know. <laughs> uh, well, we, we do. We appreciate you joining. You add something to sure. the show. Obviously, Nelson, Nelson likes that, and we really enjoy having you. You're a good sport to put up with me, and I know you got to put up with Casey a lot too. So you're a double good sport. We appreciate having you. No problem, man. All right. We'll see you guys next week. All right. See you. I think that sounds pretty good.